to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I'm your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger. Before we begin, please uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel to get your free weekly Positive Parenting with Astrology content. Today we're doing something a little different. I'm inaugurating a series of weekly astro parenting tips. This is going to be in addition to my regular weekly content. So these are going to be much shorter videos geared toward kind of giving you an actionable tip. And I you, I don't like using the word tip because parenting is not like a bunch of hacks and tips. It's kind of more a mindset and where your relationship with your child is to transform for the better, for an overall more peaceful household. So I kind of don't like using the term parenting tips because there's not like a quick fix to um, strengthening a parent-child bond. Nevertheless, that's the best word I could use uh, for the moment. So uh, think of this as kind of a, like an actionable uh, activity or thing you can do that over time will work to strengthen your bond with your child. And that will make for an overall kind of more relaxed and more peaceful parent-child relationship. So this week, the tip is about Scorpio children. As you know, I publish a lot of content on Scorpio kids. I have a Scorpio child myself. I have a lot of Scorpio people close to me. I cannot avoid these people. Um, so the first uh, kind of big thing I want to share with you is about Scorpio kids. So I get a lot of complaints from parents about things like their Scorpio children don't really talk to them. They don't share things with them. They don't answer questions directly. And they're just kind of very reserved and withdrawn. Now, Scorpio energy in general is an introverted, kind of withdrawn, very private energy. You can have, and you will meet, Scorpio people who are extroverts. I don't want to, you know, suggest that all Scorpio people or people with Scorpio energy in their chart are always introverts or can only be introverts. As I've said before, I've never seen like one single indicator that would indicate um, in the birth chart whether someone is an introvert or an extrovert. Nevertheless, heavy Scorpio energy tends to be introverted and very private, okay, especially about their most innermost thoughts and feelings and values. So there is, there are things you can do to, I don't want to say make your child open up to you, to create the space where your child feels relaxed and comfortable enough to open up to the parent. And there are several things that you can do to kind of create that space and just make your child feel more at ease. So one of my favorite things to do, because it's something you can do over time, right, is pick an activity, a low key activity. Watching TV is a great activity. Going out to eat at a cafe is a great activity. Just walking and window shopping is a great activity. And you wanna do that, the parent wants to do this with the child just one on one. So if you have multiple children, it's certainly more difficult to carve out time for this, but you can, you know, take a day once in a while and do this with just your Scorpio child, right? One on one. So you want to choose a, a very low key activity where there's no pressure to accomplish anything. And the outcome of the activity is not important. Cooking is a great activity too, as long as you can let go of the outcome. And if the outcome of what you're cooking or baking isn't perfect, you're not bothered by that. There are a lot of perfectionist parents that are like, no, it has to be this way. When I cook with my kid, like if what we're doing doesn't turn out exactly as we thought, that's okay. It's the process that's more important than the actual outcome. But you want to choose an activity that's not like hyper competitive. You know, playing board games and cards are, are great as long as, you know, neither one of you can ends up like super upset um, that, you know, the game doesn't turn out how you want. And there are parents like that. There are adults who are hyper competitive with kids, which is a different uh, topic for a different video. But um, anyway, that's the point is you want the activity to be low key. There's no pressure to really accomplish anything. You're occupying the same space and your attention is not, it's, it's on the child, but it's not like hyper fixated on the child such that the child feels like you know, they're under the radar, under the microscope. You don't want to create that environment, okay? So watching TV is a great activity because you're not hyper fixated on each other. You're watching the program, but you're occupying the same space and you can comment about the program and you can remark about different things and you can ask each other questions. 
And when this happens, the child feels relaxed because they're under no pressure to do anything. They're under no pressure to answer questions from you. And they can relax into the activity and relax into the time with the parent and they start to feel very comfortable. And when they realize that all you want is their company, that's a very powerful thing because it's communicating to the child that they are worthy of the parent's time and attention. And obviously the parent, you want to put away your phones and not be like doing five other things while you're doing this low key activity with your child. You also, the parent should relax into the activity. And that's also a good model for your child that they don't have to be doing a million things all the time. You know, my opinion is multitasking is a myth. What you're really doing is it's task switching constantly switching your attention back and forth among various tasks. And that just leads to burnout and mental exhaustion. But again, that's another topic for another day. But you know, the parent, my point is the parent should be relaxing into the activity and the time with the child as well. Okay. So the child feels comfortable and at ease. And eventually after you do these things, these activities over, you know, weeks and months and even years, where there's no expectation on the child to talk. There's no expectation on the child to answer questions. What all the, all the parent wants is the company of the child and the parent is giving freely their own time and company. The child eventually learns that the parent is a safe person who only, who, you know, provides this space for the child to be relaxed and to be themselves. And then the child will naturally feel comfortable enough to open up to the parent. And it's important that when the child does that, that the parent listens. And sometimes what the child shares is just inconsequential things or things about their day or run of the mill things. And sometimes what the child shares are highly significant representative of their innermost thoughts and feelings, or maybe things they have been ruminating over for a long time or things they were not comfortable sharing with you that now they are comfortable sharing. Okay. And again, it is important that you do not react with judgment when they share things with you. So while it may seem like a very simple thing that you're doing when you do this activity with your child, whatever low key activity you choose over time, it's a very powerful mechanism because you are, you know, spending time together in the presence of each other, but there's no pressure on either one of you to, to talk or perform, right? The surefire way I tell parents this: a surefire way to get a Scorpio child to withdraw even further is to continuously pepper them with questions and say things like, why don't you talk to me? Why don't you tell me about your day? And they will feel very like invaded and they don't like that. And they will withdraw and clam up even further. So if you don't want that to happen, I suggest that you, you know, refrain from asking questions. Or if you ask a question and it's clear the child doesn't want to talk, just drop it. Just stop asking questions. Just say nothing. And that's an important point. Like when you don't know what to say to your child, very often the best thing to do is just say, Hey, I'm here if you want to talk and that's it. And just stop talking. You don't have to fill every second of the day with words and communication, different, different, uh, Zodiac signs with different energies may feel otherwise, but you don't, right? You don't have to fill up all the time with words, silent contemplation, it's also a very powerful thing. So that is what I wanted to share with you today. I'll stay tuned next week for your next astro parenting tip and I'll be back soon with my regular content. All right. Thanks for listening.